Hey folks, it's Point Shooter here. Well, tonight I'm doing a video on night navigation. What I've got here are two examples of compasses. I've got my brand new Silver Ranger, which was a birthday gift to me. And then I've got a uh, cheapy lens out of compass here. Um, I've got a nicer one of these, but it's a lot older, and I find that the phosphorescent doesn't glow as bright. So for this demonstration, I'm using this one. Um, normally, there would be two glow dots up here at each end of the sighting wire. But what we're going to talk about is holding and locking an azimuth at night using a glow-in-the-dark compass, using the two types. So um, let me show you what you've got here. Hold my flashlight. You've got the Silver Ranger, and what you do is you pick on the bezel here. Let's say you want to sight into 60 degrees. So you turn the bezel until 60 degrees lines up with the uh, index mark here. Then you rotate the compass until the needle lines up in the doghouse. It's that simple. Then, to lock and hold the azimuth, you turn your body in that direction. So I'm going to turn this way, and you follow that path as long as the needle lines up in the doghouse. So what does that look like at night? Let me get my light here charged up. And that's what you're looking at. You've got your index marks here, and right here, see that? You want to make sure that, might be a little hard to see, but see how there's, it's like a gun sight. See how that, you've got the one tab in the center. It's real hard to see on the video, but as long as you keep those marks aligned, you will stay on path, and that's how you lock in an azimuth at night. Now, we'll have to do another video on sighting at night, but um, if there's interest. But uh, basically, it's the same way as you would sight during the day. You use your two index marks here, and you would find your bearing and then uh, this is the well, same way so let's say let's do it in the light so you can see but let's say you know you're you're facing this direction and you say okay what's my bearing you've picked your your landmark and you've sighted at that object let me do it so I don't get shadow here you then look where the needle is and you rotate the doghouse until it lines up with the needle, and that's how you lock that azimuth. That's that you say, okay, I'm going to focus on that tree in the distance or that mountaintop, and now, as long as you keep them lined up, you will continue on that azimuth, on that bearing. So, that's with the Silver Ranger. Now let's talk about a lens attic compass. This one's going to be a little bit harder to see because it doesn't have the, the luminous markings, but it's the same principle. You pick your your bearing, whatever it is, you're, you're sighting it, and you see this little index mark here with the window? You rotate that, and on a genuine military one this will click when it goes around. You rotate it until it lines up. Now, I'm going to show you what it looks like glowing in the dark. You use the, uh, this is the Streamlight uh, SL20, and let me give it a little bit more juice there. This one does not glow very well, not like a Kamenga with uh, tritium in it or with a good phosphorescent like the, uh, the Silva. See, here's the Silva again. You can see it's still, it's still glowing away. But here we go. There's your lens attic rose. Now, you have sighted that in, and you've lined up right here where you can, you, you can barely see it. You basically have to do this tactile feel, that you can feel there's a bulge here where that north arrow is. And I'm just going to show it to you in the light. As long as, as long as you keep this line lined up with your arrow there, your uh, your bezel indicator line there, you're going to stay on a direct path. Now, normally with this compass, you take your, you would sight through the the sighting window and all that. At night, you're probably not going to be able to do that. Yes, there are normally two luminous dots here. This is a cheap model and it doesn't have it, but a more expensive model would would have luminous dots there. But uh, by using this, this one is a little bit different. I really like this, though, because if you, let me charge it up a bit, it gives you a full compass rose. When you deal with a Silva, or any base plate compass, whether it's a Sunto, or a Silva, or a Brunton, all you get is you get the north needle, which is right here to the left of those two lines, and you get the two lines, and you have to match those up. Now you can in the dark sort of feel it out about which one is north and which one is south, 
but there's no one on the market other than some of the British military ones like the Silva Model 4 that um, have radioactive tritium markings. Um, they're not available in the US, you have to get them from the UK. And they use radium. The advantage of a true Kamenga compass is that this compass rose, and it's faded so much you can barely even see it, let me charge it up again, is that that compass rose is going to stay glowing all night because what it is is it's the same material, it's the same phosphorescent material, but it uses tritium, which is a radioactive gas, to charge the uh, particles and give off the light. And as you can see, you charge these up with, this is uh, this uh, SL20 is a 200 lumen flashlight, and you're giving that a good hit, and yeah, it glows, but not for too long. It'll event the, the Silva does a lot better than the Lens Addicts, but um, the Silva, it'll glow for a while, but it depended on your night vision and as soon as you flash that flashlight you lose what night vision you have and I do not find that red lights light these up very well you need a pure white light to do it and everybody says oh well leave it out uh, at sunset and it'll charge it up yeah but within an hour or so it's gonna be pretty dim and it's not gonna be very easy for you to see if you're gonna be relying on night navigation I definitely recommend that you get a tritium compass uh, or if you're overseas one with radium in it there's definitely health hazards to deal with that. Um, I've, I've fought with people on my YouTube channel when I did a compass modification video a couple years ago and people said, oh well, you know, the, the health hazards are minimum and people use it in gun sites all the time. Yeah, that, that, that may well be, but um, I don't recommend that you go with things radioactive unless you need it for nighttime navigation, which is why, since I don't really do night navigation, I'm fine with a standard phosphorescent non-radioactive. But if I was in a situation like a missionary overseas where I might have to do something at night, or if I was doing uh, backpacking and night travel, um, I would want something that had tritium in it. Now you need to understand local uh, legalities. I don't know if some places there's different laws, different things like that, but it's definitely something you need to take into consideration. Once you introduce tritium or radium into a compass, it's no longer just a standard backpacking compass. It's something that, that does will set off a Geiger counter. So definitely something to be um, cognizant of. Um, what do I prefer? Generally, I really like, for nighttime, I like the Lens Addicts because in the Kamenga compasses, there's actually an illuminated window there that if you look here, these are your bearing uh, numbers here, and you can actually, you can literally use this at night with no lights, and it lights up your window and allows you to read your numbers. Not only do you get your compass rose, but you, got, you get a number glowing here. So you can actually dial in a bearing without a flashlight. And that's why I think that the Kamenga is superior for nighttime navigation. They make a base plate model, and they make the standard lens attic like this, like a USGI compass. The one disadvantage is that if you're using a map, it's not a see-through bezel. This is a see-through bezel. See how you can see underneath that? If you're laying that down on a map, and you want to measure off an angle from something, it's very easy to do. That's why they call this overseas a protractor compass. With the uh, Kamengas, it's a little bit more difficult. You need to have some other different types of knowledge and sometimes other equipment to do that. Uh, grid squares, different things like that. Piece of string, whatever. There's different ways to do it. But um, for general orienteering, a base plate compass is going to do you fine during the day. I grew up using lens out of compasses. I've, I've been using them for about 10 years. This is the first base plate compass that I've actually had in use. Well, I did have another Silva, but I've never really used it out in the field. But uh, this Ranger is the first one I've done any sort of land navigation with. And it works great, there's no doubt about it. But um, if you really are going to be doing stuff serious at night, the Kamenga USGI tritium ones are good to have. Remember about tritium is it has a 10 year half life. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you get something fresh that's going to last longer. You can buy the old ones. Basically, um, the way that the military had them, Kamenga has a contract right now, so they're making them. But before that was a company called Stocker and Yale also known as S-N-D-Y, S-A-N-D-Y, meaning Stalker and Yale. Sometimes you'll hear it called a Sandy Compass. But um, you can get those. They were made the contract up until 1991, I believe. And so obviously here in uh, 2013, that tritium is done. Uh, it's not going to have, it's, it's at like a quarter life now, so it's not going to glow brightly anymore. You're not going to get that, you know, nice, well, you can't really see it there, but you're not going to get that nice glow with 20-year-old uh, tritium. Most of the tritium compasses that you get on the market are within 10 years old, so they're probably a good value. But um, I think that if you are doing nighttime navigation, 
uh, and especially if you don't want to compromise your night vision, go for something with tritium. It's that green light. It's not going to compromise your night vision, and it allows you to, at a glance, always have a good bearing. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope this is good information for you. If you are going to do land navigation, don't just take my word for it. Get out, work with an instructor who's trained and can train you. Make sure that you understand uh, the terminology, the techniques, and the equipment ahead of time so you don't get lost. Take care, guys. Stay safe. This is Point Shooter signing out.